I'm pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Dong Lin for our, our seminar today. Uh, Dong received his BS degree in mechanical engineering from Harbin Institute of Technology in 2004. Dr. Lin obtained his MS degree from Huazhong University of Science and Technology in 2007 and University of Nebraska Lincoln in 2009, both in mechanical engineering. He received his PhD from Man Manufacturing Direction in School of Indus Industrial Engineering at Purdue University in Indiana in 2013. Um, after that, Dr. Lin worked with Professor um, Byron Pipes and Professor Gary Chang uh, as a research associate at Purdue. Um, and then he joined the Department of Industrial and Manufacturing Systems Engineering at Kansas State University in 2015. He is currently an affiliate faculty member of Johnson Cancer Research Center. So uh, Dr. Lin has a number of awards. Um, at K-State, he is the recipient of the NSF Faculty Early Career Development Award. Um, Kansas NSF EPSCOR First Award, the Big 12 Faculty Fellowship Award, Outstanding Assistant Professor in the Carl R. Rice College of Engineering, and his current research interests are focused on 3D printing of aerogels. Uh, he also holds the Guinness Book of World Records uh, record for the least dense 3D printed structure at 0.5 milligrams per centimeter cubed. We're excited to have you, Dong. Um, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the invitation and uh, thanks for the introduction. <laughs> I, okay, so today uh, we are, uh, I'm going to talk about two major parts. The first part is like a 3D printing of aerogel. Another part is uh, our research related to 3D printing of carbon fiber composite. So let's, uh, let's talk, talk for the first part, our introduction. So what is aerogel? So aerogel is a, a class of porous solid material that I uh, exhibit extreme material property. For example, uh, actual low density, you can see here, very good semi insulator here, high specific air, lowest dielectric constant. So that's kind of like some uh, uh, aerogel. So uh, the global aerogel market is predicted to be $1.9 billion in this year. And the major materials for aerogel are like silica, uh, alumina, and the carbon. So the major market for aerogel is like uh, North America and uh, with broad applications, for example, oil, gas industry, um, like a uh, thermal insulation for building and so on. So uh, let's talk about carbon aerogel. What is carbon aerogel? So it's a 3D network of interconnected nanometers. Uh, nanometer size but like carbon materials, for example, uh, carbon particle, nanotube, carbon tube, and graphene with broader application. Uh, so uh, previously, like before joining, uh, how's it, before coming to K-State, uh, I, I spent some time to study like graphene aerogel. Graphene aerogel with some like uh, uh, unique properties, for example, high porosity, uh, large surface area, low density. So when well material with a density smaller than 10 milligram per cubic centimeter, we call it the actualized material. A high electric conductivity, uh, outstanding mechanical robust, a uh, house mechanical resilient under compression. For example, in 2018, we published paper uh, in advanced materials. We designed the microstructure inside the aerogel, graphene aerogels, so that we can compress the graphene aerogel to 99% and it can fully recover from the compression. Uh, however, the major techniques to, to fabricate, to manufacture the graphene algae are based on the mold, mold base. So they can only fabricate, for example, like cylinder algae, like what you can see here, or cube algae. So here is a question at that time. How to manipulate the uh, macrostructure of algae for, uh, for broader applications? So we quickly came up with an idea so we, we use like a steel lithography to print uh, like whole polymer structures and we infiltrate with graphene oxidized suspension and then we do hydrothermal so then we can grow our graphene graphene aerogel inside the polymer and then we burn the polymer we get our like 3D graphene aerogel. However, it's still template based our 3D graphene. So is it possible for us to do uh, template free technique? Uh, 
So here, this is the first paper in this field. Uh, it was published by Imperial College. So what they did is like this. They mix the graphene together with the polymer. So basically, they, they do 3D printing of the graphene polymer composite. And then they burn the composite, burn the polymer, sorry, and then they leave the graphene. However, uh, graphene energy is made by this method uh, has a poor mechanical property. For example, you can see they can only compress to 20%. And at the meantime, as you can see here, just the structures they print are 2.5D. They are not truly 3D. And there is another issue is like this. Uh, when they finish printing a layer, there is a boundary between layer, between layers. So the second paper and the first paper in the United States is published by uh, Lawrence, you are more national lab. Uh, they use the similar way. They uh, add up, they print graphene silica aerogel. Composite energy together, and then to use HF to edge the graphene. As you can see, they also edge the, sorry, they use HF to edge the silica. And at the meantime, they also edge the graphene. And you can see the distinguished boundaries between layers so that they can only compress along this direction because they do not have like a, a bounding strength between layers. They are not able to compress along this direction. So, so as you can see, all the all the three D printing techniques, they print the composite and they use chemical thermal method to remove the other material so that they can get a graphene. So here, when we were trying to find a way, we 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 thought whether we can find a way to directly three D printing graphene energy so that we can we can have a better quality. So let's go back. To, to the thing, to the graphene energy synthesis. So for example, there is a template based CVD, CVD method. So we don't want the template. So, and the hydrothermal method, centrifuge vacuum evaporation and the freeze casting. So let me spend a little bit more time about like, talking about like uh, freeze casting. So for example, if we have a container here and uh, we have like a graphene oxide sheet, is uh, they are dispersed in the like the water, so here and then if we apply a low temperature here, let's see negative thirty degrees C. So because we have a low temperature here, so that ice crystal grow from here to here uh, along the temperature gradient because temperature gradient is along this direction, and then and then the ice crystal squeeze the graphene oxide sheet. And align them along the temperature gradient, and then we use we do freeze drying. We remove the ice crystal so that we have the interconnected pore along the temperature gradient. So this is how we use freeze casting to fabricate or graphene or graphene aerogel or other aerogels. Freeze casting is a general method, so we can use it to to manufacture a lot of like aerogel. So, so. After like checking all the methods, we propose, we propose our method. We propose we use freeze casting plus inkjet printing to do the 3D printing of graphene energy. So let me show you the plan for. So here, this is our like, uh, we, we, we give this name, we give a name to this uh, uh, technique. We call it the 3D freeze printing uh, technique. So this is a plan for, you, uh, we have two nodules here. Why do we have two nodules here? The first nodule we have water, pure water. The second nodule we have like graphene uh, oxide sheet. So when we uh, deposit, drop it on the cold plate, it freezes into into ice. If we have another part in here, for example, the temperature gradient is here along the Z direction, right? So the ice crystal grows and then squeeze the nanoparticles, and then if we remove it, we can have pores, interconnected pores. And then here is the challenge. For example, if we have an interconnected pores in one layer, and then the question arises here. Is it possible for the ice crystals to penetrate the boundary and then still grows along the direction so that we can have interconnected pores along the whole structure, right? If we can have like an interconnected pores, a lot of the whole structure, we can find a lot of like applications. So that's a question here. So 
And let's, let's move back to the question, why do we need two nodes? So for example, if I want to print, uh, let's see, if this is graphene oxide structure, as you can see, here is the overhang features, right? These overhang features, we cannot see, do you have to print graphene oxide suspension because so that we can print, we can have another water freeze in twice to support this structure. So this is like a, what we propose to do. And then here is our like a first version of our 3D printer. So we have two nodules and we have a cold plate. At that time, the cold plate is around negative 20, uh, 20 degrees C. And then you can see the white one is water, the black one is graphene oxide suspension. So basically, we deposit the ink onto the cold plate and it freezes into ice. And then we use two nodules to print this kind of like a 3D structure, truly 3D structure with overhang feature. And then we put it into liquid nitrogen, we do freeze drying, we do thermal reduction, or reduce the graphene water to reduce graphene water. So then we can. So we firstly achieve the 3D printing of like a 3D graphene aerogel with very low density. And we can also print like a 2.5D structure. And uh, as you can see here is one of my undergraduate uh, research assistant. As you know, the state flower is like of Kansas is like sunflower. And uh, our, our, uh, the log here, this is a logo for our university with the white cap. So we put the cap on the sun, uh, sunflower let me show you on the video. So after printing, after some reduction, we check the microstructure. Um, here, this picture shows the Z direction. Z direction is a temperature gradient. As you can see, the graphene sheet are aligned along the temperature gradient. That's good. And here, the second thing. So we know the layer thickness of the printing is like around 100 micrometer. So you can graph this here kind of boundary here, right? However, if you zoom in, it's actually boundary free. We do not see the boundary. If we check, if we check the top surface, we can see the, like a, uh, the pore size. Um, so why can we achieve the boundary free printing? We propose a, we propose a mechanism. So for example, if we print one layer, this layer, so if we print this layer, this layer is like a freeze into ice, right? And then we deposit another layer. So the temperature of the graphene oxide ink here is higher than the, the ice crystal. So when we have droplet here, the droplet melt the ice, ice crystal, and then they freeze together to form the second layer. So it's similar to the metal additive manufacturing process. So we propose the ice crystal in the previous, previous layer can penetrate the boundary and grow to another, another layer. So we propose this, this, this mechanism and then we conduct ice speed in situ extreme imaging uh, at uh, our slack to approve our like a uh, proposed mechanism. We study three hierarchy uh, like a separate droplet, how to uh, form uniform line and how to form 3D structure. So as you can see, after we, we eject, uh, deposit the droplet onto the cold plate, uh, the cold plate like uh, here uh, grows because of similar expansion. And I also studied the uh, uh, formation of line with like a different kind of like a uh, distance between the droplet. Uh, we study the height, the relation between height and the distance between droplets. We also study the 
you see if we deposit one droplet and another droplet, the distance affects the how we can form the uniform lines with proper with proper like distance. The region front inside the droplet can approach along this this direction so that we can have uniform uniform line along the printing direction. And then the key, the key, um, the key thing of our printing is like, uh, for example, if we print one layer of like uh, ice, and then we deposit another layer, there's the second layer, there's the third layer. If we have the right parameter, the ice crystal you can see actually penetrates the boundary and it grows from the second layer to the third layer. So that the ice crystal is continued, right? From, from layers. And then if the ice crystal is continued, then we use freeze drying to remove the ice crystal, which means the pores are continued. So that we, we, have, a, we have like a 3D printing technique, we can print continuous, uh, printing areas with continuous pores. So that's kind of like a unique, um, property of our 3D printing technique. And then we measure the electrical, uh, electrical property, we compress it and we, we measure the resistance change. And, the, and the, we compare the basic conductivity versus density, as you can see, because for example, if we print a structure like this, because we can, con we can, we can control the uh, porosity so that we, the local density, if we have the Thin overall density with the like uh, bulk energy, the, the local density of our energy is higher. So then we can have higher uh, conductivity when compared to the bulk energy. We also we also like uh, study the mechanical property. We can compress to fifty percent and it can fully recover. And uh, and we can, we also have like better mechanical property when compared to energy with the thin density because we can like as you can see. We can control the local density. So, okay. So after we published the first paper uh, in 2016, we are check we attracted some public attention. For example, there is a um, 3D uh, 3D printing exhibition in uh, the Museum of Central Pampilla. Uh, Central Pampilla is the uh, uh, largest modern art museum in Europe. They invite us to like, send some allergies to them. So we print graphene allergies, we print another cellulose allergies for them. We also print a hybrid allergy, graphene and another cellulose allergy. And this is the logo of this museum. So for them, for the presentation, or for the exhibition, sorry. And uh, in 2000, I think in 2017, the Guinness World Record Organization contacted us and confirmed is the least dense 3D printing structure, and then they give us a, a certificate. So this is a certificate. This is my group at that time. And uh, you can see the light structure we printed. As I mentioned previously, freeze casting is a general method to prepare allergies. So hopefully our techniques is also a general method to print allergies. So we print graphene allergies, it's graphene is 2D material. So that we also print zero nanowire allergies. Zero nanowire is 1D material. So we can print the zero nanowire allergies with the ultra light density. And uh, we, we, we conduct one interesting uh, result I, I really want to share with you. So because we do 3D printing, we can manipulate the mac macro structures. So we can print uh, like, uh, uh, so-called like a negative perspiration structure. If we have a bulk aerogel, like a nanowire aerogel, if we compress it, let's see, if we compress 50% of the aerogel, the, conduct the conductivity should change like 40% or 50%. Because if we compress them, the contact point between nanowires increase. So the conductivity increase, uh, the resistance decrease. However, with the negative perspiration structure, we compress to 50%, as you can see, the resistance almost stable. So this is kind of like an interesting result. So uh, the, the macros, 
the sorry the negative postural structure, the microstructure absorb the deformation, not the microstructure. Uh, and also we also print like a silica area, silica is a kind of like a particle. We use silica particle to print the silica area. And as we know, silica area is built like thermal insulator. And as you can see, the particles are aligned along the, the temperature gradient. <clears throat> so uh, we have been successfully printed like a GLD, 1D, and 2D material by ImageJet uh, plus phase casting. However, ImageJet printing can only print a low density, low concentration. If we want to print a high concentration, uh, we cannot use ImageJet. So we extend this technique to phase casting plus extrusion. So we just replace this nozzle from our uh, ImageJet printing to our extrusion nozzle and then the same mechanism. Okay, <clears throat> so for example, the human bone structure uh, has like a hierarchical uh, like a pores from macro pores to micro pores. The state of the art 3D printing technique, they can mimic the macro pores. However, it's hard for them to mimic the micro pores here. So for example, the the pores provided by the counter techniques. The pores are like the gaps between the printed lines. If we zoom in the, the printed lines, they have a kind of like a random pore. So, so we use our technique to print the uh, hydroxide uh, energies and then we compare the mechanical property. If we compress along this direction, we, we have a really good like a mechanical property. And if we compare it along this direction, because we we have like a hundred, we have bonding strength between layers, so we can still compress along along this direction, as you can see, this direction. So it's kind of low, but we still have to judge. And then we started the microstructure from the top surface. We can see like we have micro pores, and if we cut cut the cross section, as you can see here, we have like a multiple layers. However, the, the pores are interconnected, as you can see here, because the ice crystal penetrates the boundary between layers and then the growth from bottom to top along the temperature gradient. So then we can generate the interconnected pores. <clears throat> so control the microstructure alignment. So in the previous experience, we have one temperature gradient. It's along Z direction. So we do not have temperature gradient along X, Y direction. So we can have like a line of pores along Z direction. However, as you can see here, X, Y direction, the pores are randomly aligned. If we add a, like a PDMS wedge here, so that we can generate two temperature gradient, Z direction and the Y direction. So that we can have better control of the alignment so that we can have low alignment along y direction and the z direction. So this, this, uh, this paper is published by uh, University of uh, UC Berkeley. And then we, we did some like an in situ X3 study about the fundamental mechanism of phase casting like a unidirection and bidirection uh, in Argo. So for example, you can see the ice crystal grows along this direction or unidirection, one temperature grid. If we have two temperature gradient, the ice crystal grows like this. So we we use we also implement the bidirectional idea to our 3D printing technique. So we like a, we conduct a 3D printing of like a nanocellulose energy. Uh, you may know or you may not know like Kansas, the major policy, the major industry in Kansas is aviation, right? We all we all we all take like an airplane. And then in airplane we, we can hear a lot of noise, right? This kind of big noise make uh how to make us uncomfortable. So we print like aerogen with unidirectional and a, and a bidirectional alignment, as you can see, with the bidirectional alignment, the absorption efficiency is all, around 90%. And the unidirectional is around 70%. So with, with controlled alignment, we can 
have better, like for example, this kind of one obligation noise reduction. And uh, why we use nanocellular? Nanocellular is cheap. It's from wood, from plant, and it's light, actual light. And 3D printing, uh, 3D freeze printing plus. So we use 3D uh, freeze printing as a as a like a template, or we can extend this technique. For example, uh, we previously we we made like graphene oxide energy, and then we use atomic layer diffusion to coat a layer of aluminum oxide on the graphene sheet. The thickness is 10 nanometer, and then we can burn the graphene oxide so that we can have pure aluminum oxide energy. For the composite energy, we can compress to 80% with, with the recover. If we compress, the aluminum oxide energy we can compress to 65% and it's the recover. So we combine this, this idea with 3D printing of like a graphene oxide energy with negative perturbation structure, and then we can do atomic layer diffusion, and then we can we can have like a 3D ceramic energy with negative perturbation structure. We also try to uh, for this 3D printing of graphene, MOS2, the hybrid energy for sodium iron battery application. We also like uh, we collaborate, collaborate with the product in Purdue. So we print the graphene oxide, graphene energy, and then they do hydrothermal, they, they deposited the uh, magnesium uh, MO2 onto the template. So for super capacitor application, there is one thing I really want to mention is like this. Uh, we also in, uh, how say, integrate the fiber electron nano generator here with the with the uh, super capacitor. So we have uh, like a self powered uh, nano system with uh, for the energy harvesting and the energy storage. So um, this is the current applications of our three D printed energy acoustic absorption, as I mentioned. Uh, bone structure, energy housing, or uh, energy um, supercapacitor, like a flexible supercapacitor, chemical absorption, chemical sensing, thermal insulation, dual heating, and so on. Well, then, okay. So there's another major research uh, here in my lab is 3D printing of actual high uh, strength compact components. Um, so, for example, um, carbon fiber composite is a successful, uh, a successful story. For example, Boeing 787, Jim Nyla used like 50% uh, of carbon fiber composite by weight. Um, however, conventional, ma uh, conventional man manufacturing methods are uh, kind of challenging for them to fabricate a complex structure. So, 3D printing is proposed to fabricate, to manufacture component or like a complex structure. For example, here, as you can see, the uh, Oak Ridge, they printed a cup. And this is like a previous like a, a present. Uh, he was in a cup, like 3D printed a carbon fiber composite cup. And uh, the technique proposed to print short carbon fiber composite with like a FDM, they mix the carbon fiber with the uh, polymer and do them together. We know for carbon fiber composite, they do not have good mechanical property. We want to con do continuous carbon fiber composite. So here is like uh, the reported reported method for many major reported methods for 3D printing of continuous carbon fiber composite. For example, uh, FDM. So we can use shoot the carbon fiber together with the polymer and then do the deposition. And this is commercial available method. They print for, uh, from Max Forge. They print uh, like a polymer and deposit a layer of carbon fiber and then a layer of polymer. So they, they can print a sandwich structure for 3D printed continuous carbon fiber composite. However, uh, this method, FDM based method, they have challenge. The first one is um, the bonding stress between the fiber and polymer is not good. 
they have like a high density of pores, as you can see, between lines and between layers. And the burning cells between layers is not good. Let me show you. So this is the one structure printed by. And you can see my hand. So in order to solve this like uh, this like uh, issues, at this stage I propose a new 3D printing technique. So it's kind of like a two step uh, measure. First of all, we purchase commercially available carbon fiber composite prepared. And then we use one laser to cut them into 2D shape. And then we place the carbon fiber, like cut it 2D shape, layer by layer, and then we shine another layer. So for example, if we have one layer already printed, then we add another layer. Here is a roller. If we use laser to heat it, the laser heat affected zone can be here. So then we can make the polymer here here, and then we can bond layers together. By doing this, we can eliminate the boundary between layers. We can reduce the pores between, between layers. Because we place the carbon fiber layer by layer, we can control the alignment of the carbon fiber. For example, all the degree or zero 90 degree or other degrees. We can even bond the carbon fiber component and the glass fiber component, like different polymer matches together by using this technique. Uh, we did some mechanical property tests. Uh, let me let me quickly go through this one because we have better results. We also like embed like a thermal cover between layers so that we can measure the temperature or change. And we also do simulation so that we can predict the temperature uh, temperature evolution during the um, laser processing. So here is like a, one of the 3D printing structure. And here, this is my student. Uh, he found a job in 3D printing. Uh, he found a job in a startup for 3D printing carbon fiber component. And he also printed a car. The car, like the, how to say, um, the remote control car with uh, aluminum frame. And then he print a carbon fiber composite frame to replace aluminum frame. And then I can use my cell phone. To so, so in order to further improve the interlayer bonding strength, we add some graphene at the boundary and then we do 3D printing of epoxy carbon fiber composite by this, by this technique. So firstly, we choose the best graphene concentration. We found this one, 2.5 milligram per milliliter has a better like lab shear strength. So we use this one for the urine. So first of all, we, we conduct the tensor strength, as you can see, uh, for the unidirectional one with graphene, we have like a tensor strength around like a 2.9 gigapascal after, after post processing. So this is pretty high, as you can see. Uh, it's better than, it's around like two times higher than, sorry, two times of the, of the reported, reported results. We also conducted like a flexure strength. And for the unit, uh, for the unit directional, we have 1.3 gigapascal. And then we made a table list all the like, uh, we, we made a table to compare our results with, with other, like all other results. As you can see, we have like a, which ratio of 63% is high. And the, the porosity is significant. The porosity is really low, 0.379%. As you can see, it's almost like a one or the more than other techniques. And uh, the only issue is our shear strength. We need to improve this one. But we have tensor strength, good, best tensor strength, best flexure strength compared to all, all the reported results about 3D printing carbon fiber composite. And uh, our 3D printing 
Our 3D printed carbon fiber composite also has the best uh, tensor shear versus tensor modules among all the 3D printed structures, um, even like a metal and the carbon fiber composite. So this is like, um, I, I would like to, uh, as I do, I really appreciate like uh, the hard work of my group members, previous group members and the current group members and my collaborators uh, inside the case state and outside of case state. Mm -hmm. I think I'm done with my uh, talk and uh, I'm glad to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much, Dong. Um, yeah. If anyone has any questions, you can post them in the chat or uh, you're also welcome to unmute yourself and ask directly. So I have a question in general. So the the idea of using um, water to mm -hmm. freeze into ice, the, the idea there is that when you're done making the composite, the ice just melts away, right? Am I understanding that correctly? Well, let me let me go go back to the slide. Oh here, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, in this process the um, water freezes into ice during the printing. And then when you're yes. done, mm -hmm. the, the ice will just melt away. Is that right? Oh, it won't melt away. So uh, we put this ice structure into a freeze dryer. Freeze dryer, right, right. With low temperature and uh, and then, and then, um, and then at a low vacuum, a high vacuum, sorry. So that's the, uh, the ice crystal are suddenly made it by this process. Yeah, right. just evaporate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I think that in my mind, um, that's an interesting way of doing this. It kind of fits into the broader category of 3D printing in general as like a sacrificial material. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm thinking of the ones where they use sand and then you, you laser anneal that into um, a solid and then your sand can fall away. But here you're, you're freeze drying the water. I guess, are there benefits to that in general? I, I understand for the carbon nanocomposite, the aligning of the, um, the sheets to get those continuous pores, but do you see advantages to using that for, you demonstrated, I think, nanocellulose, but e even for, for metals or other 3D printing technologies, are there potential advantages to using water and freeze drying versus other way of sacrificial material? <laughs> Uh, the major advantage for face casting is can generate a controlled alignment, like an interconnected port. So that's a that's a major advantage, and so that's like a that's also the major advantage of our three D printing technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really neat stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay, if there are any questions, uh, I'd like to thank Dong again for coming to give the, the seminar. Um, Dong, I think, uh, I guess we can stop the recording. Uh -huh.